Hello everybody, my name is Simon, I'm a bassist and uh, gear and tech freak and um, I got inspired by a video that was posted yesterday on YouTube. Um, question of that video was, are factory guitars junk? And they, they've dis discussed about that topic and talked about customization. It's an interesting video, linked here, check it out. Um, and I thought to myself, well, I wanted to do videos about my 8-string bass guitars long ago. Maybe now is a good opportunity to do it. <laughs> because I wanted to do it for so long and I just haven't done it yet. So, let's start with this one. So as I said, I have three different 8-string bass guitars. They are, they are all built by a, a small company in Germany called Bassline. And each of, that, of, of those three bass guitars are different. They are three different versions, evolutions if you want so. And today I talk about the second bass guitar that I've built with Bassline. So let's start. Um, the thing is called uh, Bassline Buster STD-8. Comes with an outer bodywood. Um, it's finished with see-through dark red satin. Um, and the neck is made of a three-piece hand map, sorry, hard maple uh, with three carbon rods inside and a natural satin finish. So the point for the carbon rods is I want to have my base uh, neck very slim. I'm, I'm talking about, you know, how, how thick it is and I, I prefer to have it slim so I can be fast on the neck. And in order to achieve this, we have two carbon rods inside of the wood neck to make it more stable. So this is one kind of a special thing. There are uh, a lot of manufacturers who, who do something like this and it's in that um, base. It's uh, you know, a traditional scale base with 24 frets uh, and a zero fret actually. Um, yeah. Eight strings, as I already mentioned, so when we talk about eight strings, um, I mean pairs of two strings, and they are octaved. Um, I came up with that idea um, because Joey Amayo of Man of War um, used that in the past, or maybe still using it today, um, in some songs. And I had a, a different eight string, actually of my, of my father, and the playability was just so bad. Uh, the, the string action was very high and it was so hard to play. And that's why I thought, okay, let's try and build a custom-made instrument. That's what I've done and I liked it so much, I actually have built three of them. So, and this again is the second. Um, I will dive deeper into the history, into why I have done things like that, but this is the first video, so... To keep things interesting. There are really two key things which are really interested, interesting on this bass guitar. Uh, first thing is the hardware of the bridge, which is really advanced. And the second one is the, the headstock. Now I start with the bridge, um, maybe in another video we'll dive, dive in deeper um, <laughs> into the bridge thing, um, but it's probably the most advanced bridge that I've ever seen. It just feels really really good of course you can adjust everything every single pair or every single string because we have eight strings but as you notice we have pair of strings you play it like in the four string uh, bass um, because it's always a pair and one string is one octa octave higher uh, than the other uh, so, so that's that um, and the build quality of that ETS uh, bridge is phenomenal it's it's good material and actually it's really pricey now the first base was really top heavy so the, the, the headstock was heavy and um, I thought it's a good idea to make the headstock as slim as possible as lightweight as possible so it's not top heavy anymore and that's what we have achieved with <laughs> this maybe strange looking headstock because if you notice it we have uh, regular bass tuners and then we have 
Bungeo Junos on the back side. And this is so crazy. First first time they've sent me a an, an draft of how it could work, I was like, will it even work? Like, we're talking about the base. Uh, so you put on some, some different tuners there, will it even work? Or will it just break? And actually it works. And it's, if you ask me a great idea, did it on the third base as well. Uh, all of those eight tuners are made by Schala, which is, I think, also a German company. Um, for me, the, um, the weight of the base is really important. And we have a weight of 3.45 kilograms of the entire base. So it feels super comfortable when you, when you play it. Now about the electronics, we have um, a null TCM3. Um, electronic for bass, mid and treble, um, some like EQs like that, some, some don't like it, um, I like it to adjust the tone to my, um, to my wishing, uh, to my, uh, to like what I, what I want in the moment when I, when I play or record. So, um, and we have a push-pull um, for the volume, so uh, we have a pickup split, uh, single coil, humbugger. Um, because we have a, a pickup, it's just one pickup inside of the bass guitar, an EMG MM TW, which is a solid, uh, really solid um, uh, pickup, if you ask me. So that's it for today. That, those are the specs. I will, uh, I will do it another video with, with samples where you can hear the, the, uh, the, yeah, the sound of the bass. Um, just one more thing, I've turned this bass guitar into a virtual instrument. If you're family, familiar with uh, MIDI and virtual instruments, check out this plugin. It's a VST3 or AU plugin. Um, so if, it's, if you are a bassist, you're probably not interested in that. But if you're a producer, music maker who is into MIDI, um, check out. But don't worry if you're not into that. If you're a real bassist, um, you don't have to dig it up um, all good. Um, I was just crazy enough to do this and I want to do it with my other um, basses as well. So that's for today. Hope you liked it and see you next time. Wir sind am Ende angegriffen, wir wollen Schüsse und Schüsse, wir sind alle.